Hey everyone, it's the middle of the night, so when better to film a video with wine? Today we are going to be looking at this blog that I came across this evening called Virtuous Femininity, where the author is a young Christian woman. She describes herself as a homemaker and feminine, and as someone who aspires to use this blog as constant motivation for my fellow sisters in Christ. She writes that I truly believe that God's divine order for man is the blessing we need to revive again, first starting in our minds then our households. She goes on to say, being raised by grandparents born in the late 30s, I was raised with gender roles and a godly fear. My parents raised me in a traditional home where respect and family order was very present. I'm eternally grateful for my upbringing. I hope I can inspire many women, both old, sorry, both younger and older, to find motivation, discipline, solace, and joy in my work. So not to be rude, but this is very, clearly a case of childhood indoctrination. You know, she's been brought up with this, she's never really questioned it, and now she's pushing it onto other people. Um, yeah. With all this in mind today, we are gonna be looking at um, a little selection of her blog posts, just kind of like picking a few bits out of them that are kind of interesting to talk about, um, and having a little chat about it, basically. I don't necessarily think this woman is especially dangerous. She's definitely not mean-spirited. She doesn't mean to do anything wrong, but I still think the fact she's spreading some of these messages as fact are worrying and worth talking about and discussing. Some people ask why look at these kinds of blogs, but I think it's very important to understand people with opposing views to you. I think it's very important to listen to them and understand where they're coming from, even when you don't agree with them. It can be just as important to say why you don't agree with something as it is to say why you agree with something. You know, you need to understand those thoughts and feelings and be able to explain them to others. There might be a lot of you out there who read just her blog and think, oh, actually, that makes a lot of sense. But if I don't kind of give you the opposing view or I don't tell you, hey, no, this is okay, or, or not just me, it could be anyone, then a lot of people will live their lives feeling like this is the only way, and it's not. There are so many different ways to live your life. There's no one right or wrong way, and that's the message that I want to keep talking about in my videos and on my channel. And I don't want you to get repetitive, but it's so important that everyone knows that it's okay to find your own way in life and to figure things out for yourself. There's no one set of rules. There's no one objective right or wrong way. You just need to figure things out for yourself. And sometimes you'll mess up, sometimes things will go wrong, and that's okay. It's something that might seem like common sense to some people, but it's something that so many people do need to hear, and that's why I'm gonna keep talking about it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's have a look at some of these posts. I wanna start with a post titled, Finding Joy in a Life Devalued. Because unlike everything else that I read on her site and everything else I'm gonna be talking about in this video, there's something here that I actually kind of partially, maybe a little bit agree with her on, or at least understand where she's coming from, and therefore have a little bit of sympathy for her because of. So she writes, and as we go on, you will understand why I'm drinking wine not just because I enjoy the taste, but because to get through this, God, you need something. <laughs> so she writes, I've been dealing with a great amount of opposition as of late. I've been making a greater effort to enhance myself spiritually and physically, which is amazing. That's something I can always applaud and always will applaud. Anyone who wants to better themselves and improve themselves and learn and grow, amazing. I always, always am gonna 100% support that. As I develop my relationship with God, I've also been developing my femininity. Of course, there are some around me who are not as supportive. Multiple times a day, I hear women say, I need a better job or I need more hours at work. I've also been asked why I'm not pursuing higher education or a full-time job. So like I say, I have mixed feelings about this. It does make me sad to see people judging other people's lives. And <laughs> that might sound hypocr hypocritical to some of you, but I know I feel like I need to explain this a little more because that's the whole point of this video and me talking about these kinds of topics is not to shame her way of life. It's to say, hey, don't shame other people's way of life, you know? I'm trying to, once again, as I do in so many of my videos, make a point about women about women being allowed to make their own choices and live the life they want, and men as well, obviously, and non-binary non non yeah, non people. I'm tripping up my words. Like, everyone. But yeah, no, everyone should be able to live the life they want. And this does include allowing women to be traditional housewives and stay-at-home mums if that's what they want. 
Of course, that's absolutely fine. And I'm never going to shame anyone for making that choice. I am, however, going to critique people who push that as being the only choice or the only right choice. My issue with her is purely her shaming of other women, not the life she chooses to live. And I want to make that as clear as I possibly can. <laughs> that said, the comments she's receiving from others do worry me a little bit because if people are telling her stuff like she needs to work more or get a better job or, you know, put more hours in or whatever, it does make me wonder why they're saying that to her. Like, what was the trigger? Chances are it's not just coming out of nowhere. It makes me think, especially if this is coming from people she knows in her like everyday life, like family, friends, people who care about her. It does make me think that maybe she can't currently support herself and she's not currently supporting herself and that she's choosing to remain that way. And that's the bit that I have the issue with her choosing that kind of life. If this is the case, I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying if this is the case, I find it very difficult to have respect for someone who can help themselves and chooses not to. Someone who has the ability to do more, but would rather just get others to do it for them. Now, I've spoken a little bit about this before, and I feel like I didn't express myself well, and so people kind of took a little bit of issue with what I said, and I understand it because I didn't explain myself clearly enough. I guess what I wanna try and say, and I'm gonna try and be as clear as possible, I'm not judging anyone who needs help from anyone else, whether that be financial or otherwise. I'm not judging anyone who doesn't have a well-paying job or doesn't have the best possible job or whatever. I'm not judging people who can't get more hours at work or get a better, better education or anything like that. That's not all what I'm judging. I understand that and I completely respect that some people have health issues and need support from people. Some people, the economy is so screwed up that they need help from other people. Some people just have bad luck and they need help from other people. I respect that, I understand that, I would never judge that. What I have an issue with is a person who has opportunities to work or get an education or whatever and chooses not to because they're lazy, because they don't think it's their duty to do that. They'd rather leech off someone else. That's what I judge not people who don't have a choice, not people who need help, not people who ask for help, the people who don't need it and demand it anyway. I hope that's a little bit clearer than I've like spoken about it in the past because yeah, I definitely didn't do a good enough job of expressing myself in other videos, I, I definitely know that. Anyway, I hope I'm kind of expressing that right and clearly, I hope, I don't know. Like I say, I'm not saying she's definitely doing that, it's just what it suggests and if that's the case, it annoys me a little bit. But the, the bit that kind of really kind of gets to me and makes me think that's the case rather than her just not having opportunities is this next bit where she writes, as for myself, I will continue to find joy in femininity and enhancing myself daily to be a more valuable woman in society. That's fine. Not valuable by how much money I make or how many degrees I have, but valuable in bringing back the femininity that society desperately craves. I find it difficult to find any value in bringing back femininity. I understand a woman raising kids is contributing a hell of a lot. It's something that I could not do, so hell of a lot of respect to any parent. I understand a woman working is contributing. I even understand to some extent a woman supporting her husband so he can work is contributing. But a woman simply bringing back femininity, what is that contributing? Because I'll be honest, this woman, having read about her current situation, she's not pregnant, doesn't have kids, she's not even married yet, she's not living with the fiancé, but she won't work or get an education or support herself. So she's clearly essentially leeching off someone in her life, saying that she's creating value by bringing back femininity. That's what annoys me. Anyway, moving on a little bit. I'm gonna need more wine for this. Things start getting really bad with the post. No, you don't have to be strong and independent. I, I don't know what was happening with the little air quotes there. She has a strong opening, right? While there is nothing wrong with self-sufficiency. Great, I like that. Leave it there. Don't write any more of the post. Just, that's fine. That's enough. That's all you need. But damn it, she goes on. While there is nothing wrong with self-sufficiency, the notion that women should be praised for how independent of a man she is, this is unhealthy. Is it though? 
Young women are being trained to believe that they are better women and stronger if they can do it all by themselves. If she can pay her own bills, if she can build her own career, if she can raise children all by herself without a father present. Well, yeah, I believe those women are strong and they should be applauded. I think men who do it all alone are also strong and should be applauded. I think non-binary people who do it all alone are strong and should be applauded. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that or saying that or thinking that or acknowledging that those people are strong. I'm someone who is entirely financially independent and has a career that I built up, my, built up myself and it's tough. And some people do that and raise kids. It's insane that some people can do that. They're amazing and strong. Why wouldn't we applaud that? It's incredible. The thing is, she seems to imply, and, and you'll see this as the blog post goes on, that if these women are strong, that's somehow saying that other types of women aren't strong. Wait, I'm saying women, like it's got a G on the end. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm doing this. But it's like she's implying that, oh, well, if you think these women are strong, other women must not be as strong. No, it's so important to note that there's not just one kind of strong. There's not just one kind of strong woman or strong person. So many air quotes in this video. It's just my fingers are gonna cramp up at this rate. Saying that an independent woman is strong does not mean that a woman who is in a relationship or being helped by her family or relatives or whatever or friends isn't strong. She writes, you're not a better or stronger woman because of how independent you are. You're not supposed to do it all by yourself. Kind of annoyed me a little bit that line, I'll be honest. It's not a matter of being better or stronger than anyone else. But that said, if you do wanna compare yourself to like your past self and say, well, I feel stronger than I used to be, or this was difficult, but I feel better for having done it myself. There's nothing wrong with that. You should be allowed to be proud of yourself and feel good about yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. And you shouldn't allow anyone to tell you that it is or isn't what you're supposed to be doing. As uh, she goes on to write, I am criticizing the increasingly popular theme of being strong and independent among women. Don't need that comment. Sorry, this blog is also so full of typos and grammatical errors, like my brain is like, <sighs> anyway. It is harmful because it fosters a mentality that men and women do not need each other. If you research statistics on increasing single parent households and female breadwinner households, you can find evidence of my claim. Still don't see why this is a bad thing. And also, the evidence of her claim is simply, there are more single parent households, there are more female breadwinner households. That's it. It doesn't say they're bad. It definitely doesn't say why they're bad. You see, women who have this, I got this type of attitude, often reject help or acts of chivalry in fear of appearing weak or helpless. Women also then complain of men who want them to, who want them to pay on dates or their general 50-50 mentality but fail to realize it's their own attitudes that encourage this. Oh, she's claiming women are like, I don't know, shouting for a double standard. Saying women complain about men who want them to pay or dates or their general 50-50 mentality. I don't know any woman who is all, yes, I'm a feminist, I got this, and refuses to pay on dates. It's weird, I don't know. I don't, I also don't get why that's such a big thing. It's like a huge thing just in general and people argue over it and meh, 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 and I'm like, look, is if you are on a date, is two people spending time together. Why not allow one person to get it one time and one person to get it another time? Why not go 50-50, blah, 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 whatever. For me, I'm like, if I've enjoyed spending time with someone, I'll go halves on the bill because, you know, that's me saying, hey, thanks for spending your time with me, I appreciate you. I don't get why it's a big thing. I don't get why it's a gendered thing. I just, I'm sure gay couples don't have this issue. I'm sure if you go on a date with a non-binary person, you don't have these issues. I don't get why it's only men and women who seem to argue over something as stupid as paying a bill. A man thrives when he feels needed, useful, and valued by a woman. Fathers, brothers, husbands, sons all love to feel needed and important in their communities. A man thrives when he feels needed, useful, and valued by a woman. Pretty sure most gay men would disagree. Also, again, I'd like a little evidence for this, please. And why does this supposedly only apply to men? I'm pretty sure everyone thrives when they feel, you know, useful and valued by anyone. Isn't that just a human thing? It's definitely not a gender thing. Um, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with embracing your need for and dependence on masculinity. Oh, for God's sake. You're just a weak little woman who can't do anything without a man. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Look, everyone needs other people sometimes. Reliance on another person or people is normal. It's fine. It's nothing to be looked down on. But also, dependence on a person or people 
all the time. Encouraging dependence on a person or people all the time is so dangerous. Let's be realistic. So yeah, on this point, I have to disagree with her. Uh, women who cling to their strong and independent attitudes are often taken advantage of. They are taken advantage of by narcissistic men, by their employers, and by societal standards. Um, just to translate that to normal person for you, um, if you're strong enough to not be taken advantage of, I'm gonna say you're being taken advantage of because it makes me feel better about myself. So if you actually want to avoid being taken advantage of using my messed up logic, you should allow yourself to be taken advantage of because it's not really being taken advantage of if you're asking people to use you. Is it? Hashtag tradwife logic. Apparently when you create a generation of women who pride themselves in how independent they can be, this is what happens. An increase in single mother households, increase in divorce, wives being led to believe they don't need their husbands and shouldn't. Men taking advantage of women by expecting them to be providers and breadwinners as opposed to women taking advantage of men. That's okay. All the way around, sexism. Men losing their drive or instinct to prevent, protect women. Why am I trying to say prevent women? Well, <laughs> Freudian slip. Um, again, to translate this into normal person, uh, this means it's bad because men don't want to protect women who don't need or want protecting. And so, even though that means everyone's getting what they want, I still want to argue with it because it's different and that confuses me. And to end this little blog post, apparently, while it is very courageous when a woman is able to provide the needs of herself and her family, we must not encourage this standard. And now to finish the video, let's take a look at some wonderful gender-based stereotypes that are pretty absurd because we haven't had enough of them so far, okay? And what kind of video would this be without some gender stereotypes? In the post, men don't even want housewives anymore, exclamation mark, our blogger writes, someone directly messaged me to tell me, a woman by the way, that my message was pointless because men don't want housewives anymore. They want women who go to work. Initially, I was irritated at her comments, but then I realized she was right. Just as Eve deceived Adam in the beginning, feminists have not only managed to deceive women, but men also. Damn feminists. A lot of men have become effeminate and lack the desire to provide and protect. Oh, for God's sake, like seriously, a man whose wife or girlfriend works is not effeminate. And what does effeminate even mean? It's, oh God, it's so stupid. And even if they are effeminate, why is that a bad thing? Seriously, what a lot of these women describe as an effeminate man sounds pretty damn good to me, I'll be honest. Meanwhile, last blog post we're gonna look at, oh God. This list, okay. In a list of masculine traits you might exhibit, we are warned that apparently Women with overly masculine tendencies have a much harder time working at their femininity. <laughs> Most modern women do not even realize how masculine their behavior is, whether you want to attract a masculine mate or simply want to change your behavior. Here is a brief list of unfavorable masculine behaviors in women. Cursing and inappropriate conversation, especially in public. Um, excessive sarcasm. Walking ahead of your husband, overtaking his presence. Yes, women, make sure when you walk, always stay five steps behind the man so he knows he's in charge. You don't want him thinking you're his equal. Uh, constantly trying to dominate situations or men in positions of authority, who would do that? Arguing or inappropriate bantering with groups of men? There are ways to share your opinions with men that are more feminine and charming. Paying for men on dates, don't you ever. The I don't need a man mentality as a whole, yes women, it's feminine to lie to yourself. Sitting with your legs apart. <laughs> Such a stupid one, sorry, okay. Um, drinking alcohol directly from the bottle. In my upbringing, women were to drink beer from a glass, not the bottle itself, to each their own. Okay, this one I actually agree with. It is incredibly masculine to drink beer from the bottle. When you're a classy, feminine woman like me, we do white wine. What is wrong with me? And on that note, the next thing that apparently is far too masculine for any woman is drunkenness. So on that note, let's hope this blogger does not watch my tipsy self in this video. Um, and finally, pursuing men or approaching men in an overtly sexual and flirtatious manner um, is apparently a masculine trait. Classy women know how to show interest without being aggressive or overly sexual. Ah uh, yes, because why would you want someone who you're sexually interested in to know that you're sexually interested in them. So, what I think we can take away from this list is that I am a masculine, weak woman who will never find a man. 
and that I'm not strong, I'm not independent, something, 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 there's nothing good about me, blah, 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 I'm gonna die alone, cue the cat lady comments. That's about all I have to say for now, although I do have a huge list of links and other blog posts, not only from this virtuous femininity blog, but from plenty of other blogs that I could talk about and wanna talk about, all with this kind of like trad wife, traditional wife, whatever theme. There's a feminine living, tradition in action, and don't forget housewife diary as well, which has the tagline, I belong in the kitchen. There are some gems on that one. Yeah, it's been an interesting night for me. There's a reason I've been drinking a lot of wine as I've read far too much of these blogs. Um, <laughs> God, <laughs> why do I do this to myself? In all honesty, right, I thought I've had a really kind of intense couple of days. So I'm working on this video that I asked you guys if you wanted on Twitter and you're like, yes, please do it. And basically it's debunking the kind of MGTOW incel red pill um, view of the science of pair bonding. And I'm, God, I have read so many like scientific journals the last few days, mostly talking about pair bonding, the neuroscience of pair bonding, pair bonding in prairie voles and meadow voles and marmosets and tamarinds and various chimps and some other things I can't remember off the top of my head. And I just like, not just that as well, I'm, I'm, God, I am going all in on this video. Um, so it's not just like biology and neuroscience, uh, which you guys know, I have a background in, um, when I was doing biomed at uni before I changed course, I was gonna specialize in neuroscience, that's kind of my thing. But I'm also looking at this from an anthropo anthropological and sociological perspective. I'm just kind of looking at the overall biology of this. There's so much that the guys who put forward, they're like, oh, if you have sex, you can't pair bond. Like, they, they try and use science to back that up, and it's so messed up. Their whole basis for that is from this one paper from the late 70s, early 80s, I think. Off, off the top of my head, I can't remember the exact one. And it completely, it, oh God, it, it just misses so much. Like, the biggest, most fundamental flaw is that it assumes that the levels of certain hormones in blood plasma are the same as the levels of hormones in the brain and that they do the same things and act in the same way. It, basically, they're comparing hormones in the brain of prairie voles to hormones in the blood plasma of humans and saying, because these act this way in voles, in this one particular species of voles, not even just all voles, this means all humans act like this. The jump is, anyway, that's the video that I'm currently working on and it's so fascinating. It's really interesting and I'm really enjoying it, but it's very, very science heavy and it's taken me a long time to kind of read through all this stuff and work through it. I've had a lovely day actually. I've been sat out on the balcony, just like in the sun. I was in like a little t-shirt and shorts, just kind of getting a little bit of a tan. I'm there, I'm reading, I'm writing. I had Kyra cuddling me. We played a little bit of fetch. It was, like, it was just a really nice day, but my brain was very, very tired. And I was like, you know what? I need to work on something kind of relaxing and fun and kind of turn my brain off all the serious stuff for now. So I figured something like this where we could have a giggle and be a bit silly, uh, but also, you know, learn something and talk about something important was gonna be a good thing. So, um, yeah, there you go. That's this video. And um, with that in mind, thank you for watching. Please let me know your thoughts on all of this traditional wife stuff and the views presented in this vlog down in the comments below. I love hearing your thoughts. I do read all your comments. Okay, I'm rambling, I'm shutting up. I'm gonna go. Have a great evening or morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for watching, I appreciate you guys so much and I'll see you again very, very, very soon.